get up, get, get up, get up. <sighs> keep that in keep that in abiel um <laughs> this is oh man well well welcome back to the messed up podcast episode who cares um <laughs> yeah this is this one this sucks this really effing sucks there's gonna be there's gonna be some bleeping in this one because it. it's just I mean, you guys are all Mets fans. You know how it goes. You know what happened. We don't have to explain it to you. We're gonna we're gonna talk about it because we're masochists and we love to talk about what hurts us. But the Mets have now fallen two games back in the National League East. We no longer have the tiebreaker against the Atlanta Braves. The magic number is two, but it's really one. So if the Braves win one game against the Florida Mar- Florida Marlins, Miami Marlins, I can't believe I called them the Florida Marlins. That's how little I'm tuned in right now. Uh, the season's the National League East is over. The season's not over. And I th- I do think that's important to mention is that the season is not over. There's still a lot of baseball to be played. And theoretically, the Mets are not out of it for the National League East, as James has a vicious motorcycle ripping by. But we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about what just happened this past weekend. It's going to be a lot of uh, – is pontific- pontification, you think, the right word, James? I know we drop that a lot. I don't think pontification exists. We will pontificate. We will talk. We will debrief. Uh, this will be a therapy session. I think this will be an episode unlike any that you've heard, uh, just because this is the first one that I will say the vibes are down. The vibes are very about as low as they've ever been, which is crazy because they've won 98 games. But let me do my spiel. Let me do it real quick. Make sure you're following us on all our social media at Metsed Up, M-E-T-S-D-U-P on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. If you're looking for the video version of this, Go to the YouTube channel of the New York Mets, subscribe over there, and watch us there. And if you're listening to us, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Odyssey, wherever you get your podcasts, drop us a rating, drop us a review. We could really use it because uh, <laughs> this one's this one's this one stinks. This one's this one's bad. Um, I mean, James, welcome, welcome to the podcast formally. Um, Hi, thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks. Well, thanks for joining us. Uh, we were just at the watch party with the Mets. Down at the Harry Lemon in the Lower East Side. And I will say the vibes there were fun. It was a great time. I really at enjoyed first. myself. Yeah, at first. But the game really soured everything. I mean, there's, there's no other way around it. When you when you get swept by the Braves, it stinks. When you get swept by the Braves in the fashion that they did, it stinks. And to just... I, I don't even have the proper words, I feel like, to really sum up how I feel. Besides, I'm not mad. I'm not, I'm not angry. I'm disappointed. It's the classic line that your parents drop to you when you do something wrong. I'm not mad. I'm disappointed. And that's really what it feels like. It's past disappointed. I'm just sad. Like, it's really upsetting that they lost, like, every game the exact same way. And the worst part is this team has 98 wins. And, like, in all honesty, this is going to be, like, this is going to be such salt in the wound when they win 100 games this year. And they're going to be the wild card. But it's just, it's, it's such a kicking the balls i mean there's no other way around it i feel like because this the the feeling that i have right now is this team is not bad and if you do think this team is bad i don't know what to do with you at this point because they are not bad but did they play bad this weekend no doubt i think that's i think that's 100 what happens they had a bad series the braves played better and i think the braves proved right now during the regular season they are the better team right i mean we we For, can't it's un- undoubtedly so and that sucks to say because, like, oh, this team is so, so good. But the Braves just just were a little bit better than us this year. And I think this series really showed it with the three-game sweep falling behind them. It's it's not a series I want to talk about in the slightest, but we have to. I think it's cathartic to talk about it a little bit because I want to get it out. Because, I mean, there's still so much meaningful baseball left for this team. And there are so many meaningful games ahead that I would really like this to be the last time we talk about this series. I guess, but it's only the last time we talk about the series if you're able to win the one after the, this one. You know For sure. I mean? yeah. Like if, th- if things go wrong in the wildcard series now against the Padres, this becomes the only thing that Mets fans talk about until I know. until something crazy happens. And that's almost the worst part about this. Like I'll we'll talk about the games. We'll get to it in a minute. But it's just like like it's 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 so brutal that like all the people who don't really know anything were 
across the whole year, like are objectively correct. And like yeah, all these people who make their, their minuscule living being assholes about the Mets and about trolling and about being mean and being negative or just like, now they have this like feather in their cap. It's like not objectively true, but it is like, it was borne out in front of all of our eyes on national television, no less. Yeah. And it's just, it's painful that we, we have to live in this reality now where like the worst outcome was realized. Which and like, oh, God, man, and I, I hate to be that guy because it's the timing is just so bad. But it's like, man, the worst outcomes winning 98 games and making the playoffs like for sure. But the worst outcome of this team's expectations like two months ago was not winning yeah. the division. Like it did for happen. Sure. So like and it's not that they like, like this series, the Mets didn't play well, but it's not like the body of work is is the waste because of that. But it's true that whatever the worst possible outcome that just happened. Yeah, the worst possible outcome, which is still an OK outcome, happened. And it's just, it's really hard to put into words properly how we're feeling because I don't think there's anywhere to point blame besides, like, didn't play well. Like, it's not like, you you effed this up. You screwed this up. Like, you stink. You stink. I, that's not really how I feel. But it was just, like, as a whole, the team underperformed this weekend when we really needed to step up. And nobody nobody really came to that. Nobody really did step up, I feel like, at the end of the day. Jeff McNeil kind of stepped up. Jeff McNeil had a great series. Jeff McNeil had a great yeah. series. I mean, there's no <laughs> way around that. He also had a great series, the men's bullpen. And Something Eduardo Escobar. Said. Eduardo Escobar swung the yeah. bat well, too. And the bullpen was awesome the whole series, and everyone said the bullpen sucked all year, and that was always untrue. Oh, but, God, that it, dude, Zach Brazil, you're bringing up uh, Rizzo Iglesias. Like, and I'm sure that's going to, I'm sure there are some Mets fans listening to us that are going to be upset yeah, with them. Because the Braves bullpen was really good, too. And like, I'm sure, objectively, maybe Rizzo Iglesias could have been a Met, but like, not likely because the Braves yeah. offer the better package the Mets even had in their farm system. It's just those aren't the things that we should be considering right now. Like, no, sure, no, it stinks, no. whatever. But uh, you just got beat. The team beat you. The Mets, I don't think they led after the sixth inning of any of these games, maybe even the fifth inning. And feel Braves, like it. The Braves had more power. The Braves were more timely. They worked better at bats. Their starters were better. Their I mean, like, they're also the, same. the middle they're of the also lineup the, was better. They're the defending World Series champions who got better. And have Ronald Acuna, who's healthy. Like, and I hate to, I hate saying this. I don't want to like, say this. Like that, that, even that in itself is moot because, like, even with all that I being know, true, like, we had the opportunity. I yeah, know, that's we won out of three did. games. Yeah, and you just you couldn't. They 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 beat you. They right. wanted it. They, I don't, I'm not even gonna say they wanted it more because I don't believe that to be true. I'm sure they. Both no, I think the Mets. I think the, the Mets very much wanted it. It was just we. That's like I said, they, yeah, they did. It, all year there have been times where the Mets have had adversity right they've had these tough games they've had these battles they've had these challenges and someone has stepped up and has pushed this team forward and i don't think it's from a lack of trying i don't think it's from a lack of effort of that would be, no that'd be absolutely ridiculous and anyone who thinks that i really do think i think you have to look yourself in the mirror and be like what am i what am i really saying at the end of the day like these guys want this but it is it stinks that there wasn't anybody who was able to be that theoretical leader to take control and do that because really at the end of the day baseball like it's not about one guy the whole team has to play well and the Braves this weekend just played better than the Mets one through nine by a lot I mean I even want I mean it's everything every single thing just was different for them than it was for us they looked like they were so prepared and ready to just win the series like it's like they yeah. were looking forward to it and the Mets were dreading it there was uh I mean the the vibes were we we watched all three games with each other uh, as we as we normally do, and especially for this series, uh, we were at a bar in Williamsburg the first night. Shout out to Northern Bell. We were at my apartment for game two on Saturday, and then we were at the Harry Lemon for game three on Sunday. And there was points in this game where the Mets really had the opportunity to, to break three different boroughs. We tried three different boroughs. We couldn't break. We, we really we went to Manhattan. We well, we hung out in Manhattan. <laughs> if there was a fourth game, we we're going to Staten Island. <laughs> I and like that's like uh, that's unthinkable for for us to hang out in Staten Island. No offense to those of you from Staten Island, but that's just not somewhere we're going to hang out from Queens and Brooklyn. It doesn't make sense. And there were points and and there were times in this game where like the Met the Mets had leads. The Mets had leads at all points in, lead in every game, every game, in every lead. game. Like there was opportunities, but we just couldn't get that hit. And the Mets all year, I mean, like let's be honest, guys, the Mets all year have. When we've needed those hits, they really have come through. I really thought it was because Metro Mercury was in Metro retrograde, and that was not the case. I was trying my hardest to really push that tonight. Um, the Mets just they just didn't play better than the Braves, and God, it sucks. It sucks so bad because the team is good, and this is unfortunately the taste we're going to have in our mouths until we see what happens in the next series, whatever that be. There technically is still a chance that they can win this National League East. Is it likely? 
Probably not. It's not the likely outcome. But like until we see what happens in the playoffs, this is the annoying, stupid narrative that we have to talk about. And it sucks because they're they are a good team, and nobody wants to hear that. I don't even want to talk about it, but I have to. And like Mets fans are now getting mad at all the players that played really well this entire year. That's annoying too, because like Mets fans are talking shit about Jacob Degrom, like because he gave up three runs in six innings and had to leave with a blister, and like. Mets fan talk shit about Max Scherzer because he has first bad start and it feels like the entire season. Harry Rose mm-hmm. wrote a really good tweet saying that yeah. game one in 1969 ALCS, NLCS, Tom Seaver gave up five runs, only had two strikeouts <laughs> and three walks. Like this happens sometimes when you're a pitcher against good lineups. Is Atlanta Braves lineups objectively the second best or possibly even the best lineup in all of baseball behind yeah. maybe the Dodgers? It's like, it's not like I, we got them out before. Remember, we beat them four out of five freaking times the beginning of August, which yeah. makes it even more upsetting. And I had to play his last six games against the Mid-Atlanta. It sucks. It sucks. It sucks so bad. But it's just like you can't, you can't like get mad at these guys now. Like Francisco Lindor didn't have a great series. I think he went, I think he had what, two, two hits in the whole thing. P. Alonso may have had three and they were all singles. So, like, sure. But like, their guys were still, they got you to this point. Like, they're still they're, fantastic players. They've been dogs all year. And it's like, I think you can be frustrated about the moment, but I don't think you can be frustrated at the player based on what they've done this year. Because again, like you said, the team, even still, has won 98 games. And it's so tired to keep saying that. I know that. But like, Bad teams don't win 98 games. How many bad teams do you remember winning 98 games? This Mets team would have a much better perception from the fan base if we had like 91 wins and had like a wicked swoon in August. Yeah, 100%. If the the Braves would have taken four out of five games that series in August that were all at home, and all the Mets fans would have already been okay with that, would have been like mentally prepared for the wild card because this took all the Mets fans out. And like, it's not, I'm not even saying it's unfair. Like, it sucks that this is the reality. Like, because we were expecting division, we were yes. anticipating division, we and were we should have, the entire and we time. should have when we should have won it. I stand by that. This team for should sure and have won and it. Anything we, left we, is we, not acceptable. And we broke our own record. The last year we were in the first for 107 days. This year it was like 130 days, and like we we've now set that record two years in a row. Two unthinkable records. This hundred, this, this one might not be broken even anytime soon. <laughs> to being in first place for that long, but it's just it's f- miserable, dude. It's terrible. It's terrible. It feels it's like rough. such crap. Like. This Braves team played like a 70, 700 win pace over the second half of the season. We played like a 58% win pace. Yeah. And they just, and they still f- ran us down. Like, oh, I hate them. I, I want to shout out our boy Gerson, who we've met at the game, friend of the, friend of the podcast, friend of the, you know, entire program. The program. But I think he summed it up really, really well when he said, It's so disappointing seeing the best team of my conscious life lose to a team who had an even better season. And that's something that I don't think anybody wants to hear. I don't want to hear it. It's like, I understand it's like, oh, my God, enough. Say it. Say it. They lost. They did this. They did that. But, like, I think this is a perfect summation of what this season has been. This is one of the best Mets teams in our lifetimes. I mean, what's 2006 this team probably, like, regular season-wise? 2015, remember, they got hot because they traded for Yohannes Cespedes. Otherwise, that team was dead in the water. Dead in the water. So, it's like, how how do we speak about this? How do we talk about this? Without being ridiculous, but without also not being realistic, you know? That's, like, the hard medium when it comes to talking about this, of, like, what's going on. Well, you you shook your head, too, because it's, like... I don't know to follow up what you just said. That was so. That was like too meta to even answer. It's just well, like that's, that's what I'm saying. This whole season's friggin' meta because it's, no, it's like, because objectively all those things are true. But this team, you were toe to toe with them, and you yes. literally only had to win one time, and they yeah. did. They that's didn't. the problem. No, that is true. It's very like true. they they just they walk. You walked into their house, and they said, "There's our house," and all yeah. those fans were doing this tomahawk chop, which is just one of the most obscene things that still happens in sports, and it's terrible. And like you just have to listen to that, and you have to take it, and you have to watch it, and you just to be like. They just, they just beat us. They just They're, took us from us. They literally, for what, what we had the whole year, they took it. Is it, is it, is it excessive for me to say there's worse? There's not many worse places to lose in baseball than Atlanta. Not to a Mets fan. No, it's like such, it, like you said, the tomahawk chop and all their stupid, I'll be, I'll get ready, bullshit. I mean, we've been cursed <laughs> a lot this episode. Got to be a lot of bleeps, maybe. But like all their stuff just makes it like even more frustrating, even worse. Cause we've seen this our entire lives and like, I mean, like you can hear, you can hear us groaning and moaning. You can understand the frustration. It's I'm not frustrated at the team and the players. I'm frustrated at the outcome. I think that's really what it is, is I'm frustrated that somehow this is how it happened. It's is the, this is hilariously the second time all season, the Mets have been swept in three games and they both happened last three weeks against very yeah. different teams and very different situations. But 
it's just it's like here's what happened so you almost you almost felt like something different was going to happen because of how the year went i mean really here's what it came down to is we had our bad stretch in september and the braves had their bad stretch in april may and in between both the teams were really really good and one was just a, f- a few games better and it's just like it all gets lost because it's it's all narrative based and so the mets losing late feels a lot different than the Braves losing early when all those games matter the same. But again, no one wants to hear that. So I understand you, whoever's listening to us and screaming at their car radio, like, Mark, what are you talking about? I get it. And even if you like pick out the individual moments, I kind of lost this series. It's just like game one, like three solo home runs. And then Tyler McGill letting it in and get away from him where it's like, oh, crap. And then the game where it's like the Mets score runs, take the lead and Scherzer just can't exactly put them away. It's like, oh, crap. And then it's tonight in the third inning where the Mets take another lead. They get they have the power starts to show. You actually had two home runs. You're fine. You're really on top of Charlie Morton. Felt so good. And then all of a sudden, with nine one two up, Orlando Arcia hits a seeing eye single. Ronald Acuna walks a tough walk. Chris Bassing can't put him away. And then all of a sudden, they just go down the line. Just everyone finds a way to get on base. Like this entire is it? There was no. There was. There's no. They kind of messed us tonight a little bit. They did. They a definitely messed us tonight. They braved us the last two games, but like yes. today, they messed us. And I think that's that's like just you know a, a difference of philosophy too of how these teams are built. The Braves are very much built on the long ball, and the Mets are very much built on grinding out at bats. We've talked about this all year. When you're a team that's built around singles and getting hits and getting on base, this can sometimes happen. The Mets had nine hits tonight and scored three runs, and the Braves had four and scored five. Oh, that's so enraging. It's also like, it's like I, we have to like all be honest and contrite with ourselves. Like, there's nobody more upset about this outcome than the people who are like a part of it. A hundred percent. Yeah. Like the guys in the team and the people in the front office, like I'm sure they're even like tenfold the way we feel right now, which is probably impossible to conceive, but it's like, I don't know how to respond. You Uber back from the Harry Lemon. I literally listened to Marvin's room on repeat. Yeah. Marvin's room is a hot song right now. Yeah. That's it. Like there's nothing else to think about. Like cups full of Rose, like players in my old phone should call one to go home. Like we've we've been in the season too long. (laughs) I'm just saying you could do better. <laughs> like, that's really what it is. Tell me, have you heard that lately? Yeah, I have. Like, <laughs> Dansby Swanson that you love so bad. <laughs> James friggin' Swanson. That dude's name is James. Sorry, it's James. Disgu- it's disgusting that me and him share a name. That makes me so mad. Like, and also, like, seeing his hair after a hat and helmet. Like, are you kidding me? It's unbelievable how great that man still looks. Taking off. It's called hat. There's literal terms of hat hair and helmet hair, and this guy doesn't deal with either of them, and he wears them all game. How, how, why is Matt Olson on the Braves? How did that happen? How did they why, lose why, Freddie Freeman also, and get... Why Dan's been wanting a good this year? Why did Austin Riley learn how to field? Like, what the hell? That's just... what's, what, what the deal, what's the deal with that? Why is Dan, Marcelo Zuna playing baseball? Good baseball team, man. I hate talking about it. I really hate it. I, you know what? We've said this before. We need a short episode. This is going to be our short episode. <laughs> I hate Lau Sakata. Oh, yeah, yeah, Lau Sakata. That's what we're going to call him from now on. That's the intention we'll give him. Hate him. The worst. I hate, I hate that guy. I really hate that Absolute guy a lot. Absolute worst. And I, like you said the, like you said at the top of the podcast, the I, I think outside of the like the wild card thing, that whole thing, the worst part we'll, is... Like, we'll, we'll preview that when we're more clear of head and we're actually thinking about it. Yes. But like now and now I know that's reality. I don't want to face it for like 24 no. more hours at least. No, no, no. But like the fact that like all the, the, the negative... Jerks. annoying jerks get to be right for and really they get to be right for no reason because if you watch this team all year long this is not the outcome you should have come to there's no reason you should have come to this outcome like there, there's no conceivable notion that you thought the braves were going to win 100 games the mets were going to win 98 and you were going to call that whatever you call it whatever terminology you want to say and i won't say it because it's ridiculous to say for a 98 win team but that allows those people to think that that narrative is correct and that's all I'm gonna see. And this is a personal, you know, complaint now of like, man, can't wait to tweet the next three days about nonsense. I'm gonna tweet about l- the lunch I have, and someone's gonna say, "Oh, the Mets." Blah, blah, blah. Remember when you said this? It's like, it's oh like, my god, not gonna tweet. Yeah, like it's take a social media hiatus. <laughs> Zach Wilson looked great today in the second and a half. It's third yeah, uh, quarter specifically ten for twelve, uh, two I touchdown commander. drives. Really was awesome. Stunk. Carson Wentz is awful. That guy stinks. I can't stand Scott Turner. Fire Scott Turner. I'm going to talk about some football for a second. Like, 
I mean, I guess you won the estimate. <laughs> I did. I did win the estimate. That was a dominant, yeah. dominant win to send us to uh, me back one game with a, with a with a lock for the tiebreaker going into should, the last series. Should we bring the boys in? Should we go four wide here? Should we go quad box? We yeah. don't have octo box, but should we just, go quad box here? Just quad box to the estimate and just let's get out of here. All right. So we're bringing in John. We're bringing in new producer of the podcast as well, Vito, who we mentioned in the last episode. Uh, we've been hanging out with you guys for the last few hours. Vito Would, Visor. Uh, yeah, Vito's got the visor, which yeah. uh, shout out to Coors Light. They're hanging handing out stuff. Free beer. I'll take a free beer any day. Um, how, how do you, t shirts? T shirts. How do you guys feel? I mean, we just talked for the last twenty minutes about how we're feeling. Let's let's. This is an open conversation. Let's let's hear from all the messed up boys. Vito, go ahead. I mean, welcome to the show. So, well, thank you, thank you guys. First of all, first time on the show. Excited to be here. Long time but- listener, first time caller. Long time listener, first time caller. Uh, I'll take my answer off air. Um, this was probably the hardest I felt after a Mets game since I left Shea Stadium for the last time in 2008. I yeah. mean, it is just tough. But like you guys said, I mean, it's not over. It's a 100-win team. There's still more games to go. That we're still going to see in October. It's not like 2008 yeah. where that was just the end of the year. That's to look forward to. But it's frustrating. I mean, how can it not be frustrating to lose to the Braves and see those flashlights going off all night? So now we got Vito the optimist, now John the pessimist. <laughs> no, not me. Never. Not, not Johnny Stats. Johnny Optimism. Yeah. yeah, I mean, look, it's uh I think anyone will tell you that this was not what we wanted this weekend. No. Um, I think that that's a fair thing to say, and I think that you know, uh all, all eyes likely turn to Friday, and we've said it a lot throughout the last three, four months, um, but this is a situation we're in that we would have loved to have been in last year or in 2019 or 2018 or 2017. Yeah. You know, you get in the dance. This team has very, very, very good starting pitching, um, and we know what the formula is. You know, it's not necessarily a secret, and uh, it's, a, it's a potent formula. When things are going right. And, you know, this is a sport where one day things don't go right, the next day they do. Uh, you guys remember right after the All-Star break, the Mets came out the gate, lost two straight to San Diego, and the sky was falling. Yep. And I believe they won 15 of their next 17 games. I think seven in a row. Yeah, teams, and that's, teams answered before. And I that's think like, that's like kind of the only possible silver lining of the series is that like maybe like we've been waiting to get kicked in the ass for a couple months now. To say like hopefully this woke everybody up and just yep. like now nah, you have to go you know, balls to the wall, light the fire and just go crazy. Like maybe this is it. Maybe like, it's not, but maybe it is. Like at least like we talked about this, that this was like a playoff series essentially. And it's a great playoff series to lose because it's not the playoffs. <laughs> like we actually have the playoffs left. So like maybe this is the, like you said, the little kick in the kick in the butt. Everyone's like, okay, we got a lockdown. We know what, what was lacking in this past series. And now we can fix this. I'm just saying you could do better. Tell me, have you heard that lately? <laughs> and, w- and one more thing I think to keep in mind is that, you know, the, the home run to fly ball rate that the Braves put forth in this series, Crazy. it's not really a sustainable number. Johnny like, it, it's not. Um, and that goes both ways. Like the Mets had a lot of fly balls that didn't get out in a relatively hitter friendly park. And it seemed like every single time the, the Braves put one in the air, it was over the fence. Um, and yeah, like o- over a, a whole series, a whole playoff series, which is longer than three, except for the wild card round. But for the most part, like <laughs> that's not a sustainable recipe. So I would keep that in mind also for Mets fans. Like Chris Bassett has been incredible at limiting home runs this season. Yes. And, you know, didn't happen tonight. But over the over the long haul of this season, he's proven that he is capable of keeping the ball in the yard. Didn't work out tonight, but that's been this team's bread and butter. And that's another reason why I think Met fans should not be, um, you know, taking this to an extent, which I know a lot of people are. So season's not over. Season is not. not over. We still like like we said, we're in the postseason. And as we know, you get to the postseason. It's about getting hot during that time. Like. Literally, the Braves last year stumbled into the postseason and won the entire thing. With the Mets have players. a the Mets have a great team. They have a really, really good team with a lot of really good players. And I do think also it's worth noting Starling Marte being out changed a lot too for this team. I think and you have to learn how to play without him and not having your number two hitter who's been there every day, every single game this year, who had been an All Star, one of your best players. Like there are situations that this team can improve upon, can learn from, 
And hopefully when the playoffs come, they're going to do that. Like I, I have faith in this team still, no doubt. For sure. It's just, we just got to get there now. Got to get there. We got to wake up. We got to wake up yes. and we got to start playing good baseball sooner than later. Yeah. The thing is that all the fans who are spitting the hottest takes tonight. Yes. will also be screaming. Let's go. Matt. Let, let's go. Mets the loudest on Friday. For sure. That's what it comes to at city field. And, um, you know, a good microcosm of the entire situation. I was out of town this week. I was in a random part of the country. I sat down. I was like, I'm going to try to grab a bite to eat and watch game one of the series. I wind up sitting next to a guy wearing a Met hat and an LFGM t-shirt. And I'm 2,000 miles away from home. And this guy, shout out John Segal. Hope you're listening. But, you know. Steven's brother? No. But <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I should have asked. Um, but, you know, I'm sitting in a random bar in in Texas and there's this guy and we're vibing, we're having a great time. And like, you know, it didn't go well that game, but as lame as it sounds, we were there together. And like, that's what makes this fan base so special is we all feel the lows together. And, you know, we all take it hard together. We saw it tonight at the bar. I mean, it was a great time being with all the Mets fans that we met, but like, that's what it's all about. So, you know what, like I said, be upset tonight. It wasn't what anyone wanted, but come Friday night, it's going to be a madhouse at City Field. It's going to be Turn incredible. Up. You're going to want to be there. That's what it comes to. You're going to, to You're going to want to be there. You're going to want to be at City Field whenever the Mets are there because, I mean, it's, it's going to be playoff baseball. The weather's turned. It's a little bit colder now. The leaves are changing colors. It's postseason baseball. It's October. This is what we've been waiting for. It's not necessarily the result that we wanted to start October, but it doesn't mean we can't finish October like we wanted. No, we just got to lock in for that series. Also, John gave a shout out. Want to shout out to oh, my yeah. friends who met at the bar, Tommy Boy, aka Conneria. Conneria. Homie, thank you for the uh <laughs> for the Ager. Uh who else? Shout the out Scott. Water. Scott. Yeah. yeah. Shout out Scott. Shout out Allie. Who else? Me, anybody else? I don't know. You were you were you were mingling quite a bit. I was I was pretty down. <laughs> Those are the names <laughs> I have. <laughs> I think I mean listen, that was it was a good time until it wasn't. <laughs> and it wasn't because of the actual atmosphere or anything. It was just because of the the outcome, but the watch party was a fun time. And if you're a Mets fan and they have those during the postseason, I suggest going. It's it's yeah. nice to be at least if you're going to be miserable, you're miserable around a bunch of your friends who are also yeah. as well. shadow Johnny Franco, Mookie Wilson. Yeah. Pulling up. I mean, when Mookie Wilson came to the plate, the Mets had strung together while like five hits in a row when they were down yeah. two runs, two outs in the ninth inning. Like this wasn't as bad as that. Yeah. That team won a World Series. I don't know. I've got an important <laughs> question for James here. So yeah. for all the fans at home who don't know, James – there was a karaoke offer made tonight. Karaoke wasn't in the cards. It is what it is. Um, but I'm just wondering, had karaoke been in the cards, what is the Shiano go-to karaoke song? Wow. So this is a, this is a, this is a two-part question because <laughs> the first option for karaoke is always you know try and finagle a duet, and mm-hmm. my my duet is always "Ain't No Mountain" because there's a Good very one. there's two very clear parts of that song, a male and a female, and it's short. Mm-hmm. So you're on the stage and off the stage in two and a half minutes. Twelve. That's big. And then my other one, if it's like either with the boys or alone, rich girl hollow notes. Ooh. Okay. Good one. Good one. Not a lot of words. Easy to discern all of them and like not crazy vibes. Okay. Those are my, those are my one too. I like those picks. I like those picks. I don't think I've ever done karaoke. Really? You should. Yeah. Really? It's, it's, I've never. It, you feel alive. Never? Well, because like moved to the city in 2020, then COVID happened. You do in college? Nah, South Carolina. We didn't do karaoke down I'm there. I'm sure someone did. Nah, they did South Carolina loved five points and there was a lot of going out to five points that happened and you would sing your songs there. There were awful, awful, terrible live bands that I just absolutely despise listening to. Does the South not do karaoke? I, I don't think so. I, I don't think, think they do. I'm I don't sure think they so. do. I think it's yeah. a new thing. No, here's the thing. They It's like country music. Like, what are you, you going to sing the same same song a hundred times? Talk about drinking out of sure. solo cups. And yeah, the West their, I think that's song. their whole thing. Going down the by the lake song. Yeah, with, the, your, the, with your golden well, retriever. Also, the one about the wheel on the wagon. Yeah. Wagon like, wheel. No, but <laughs> the here's the thing. The wagon. <laughs> An entire <laughs> bar <laughs> will sing the song together, but I don't know if there's bars dedicated strictly to rooms made for karaoke. I saw. I was in Tampa once, and I saw. That's not the South. I said, "It's the Florida's the South." Shout no. out Florida, dealing with dealing with some wreckage. I Shout saw the. I saw the Dell off at an Applebee's karaoke where two okay. girls did. One girl went up, did Adele karaoke, slayed it, and then another girl came up after, did an Adele song, and then went back up to the other girl and slammed her mic off. And wow! Said, Follow that. 
That's aggressive. So, I like that. I like that's that. Eight mile for Tampa, Tampa Bay style. <laughs> I saw I saw karaoke in Memphis at a bar where uh, two men were singing Ed Sheeran, and I couldn't believe it. Shout out, shout out Fourth Street, one of the best bars of Ohio State. Karaoke night every single Wednesday, half off drinks until nine. So Wait, a, you go to Ohio State? Yeah. Okay, just want to make sure. Twenty year old's dream. Twenty one year. <laughs> All right. Well, let's let's talk about this estimate because you did tie you you brought it back. I did, and it ties a win for me. So I'm basically we're basically tied right now. Yeah, you think you're going to beat me in a push-up competition. I am the crush your push-up competition. You, you, don't, you don't know the will that I have. I do. There's a lot of will. No, you have a lot of will. You have a lot of body strength. You, you ain't seen <laughs> these pipes. <laughs> oh, all right. Wait, well, James, how, many, how many push-ups do you think Mark can do in one set? Well, how long is a set? Like a minute? No, just no, how just much like do like you think I can do failure, consecutively? Until failure. Yeah. Like how many until failure? Because I, I relatively know my could, number. He could probably do like 40 to 50. Okay, you're kind of okay. in the right range there. Mark, what do you think James could do in a, in a, in a I set? I think it's got to be similar to that. I, th- I think, and I think it's similar, and it's, re- it's going to come down to will. You put me in a competition like that, I'll do it until my arms snap. So is this just the two of us are out there? Like who's counting? Because like what if one of us going faster and like, you know what I mean? Well, there's rules and regulations, like with anything in life, you know. Yeah, I'm, I think sure it's got to be. I'm assuming, assuming it's like 60 seconds properly. on the clock, and whoever beats. No, all. no, no, it's still no, failure. It's got to be rhythmic push-ups. We, one, till two, failure. Three, we go, we go in sync with each other until someone can't do it. That's fine. Or separate rooms. Separate rooms. Oh my God! You like do how ma- however many push-ups you can do, and, and see the other person. Yeah, then you figure it out. Wow, that's intense. That's like, that's like gladiator type stuff right there. All right, John. So I won the last Mestimet, which was uh, minutes of rain delay in this series. There was zero. How lucky is Atlanta? Not even close to a rain delay in this series. So it's not not even close. They got a net. They got a drop of water. All right. Yeah. So uh, this last series of the season is perhaps for experimentation. I don't know. I mean, you know, the it, it appears. We start work- if, uh, Maybe we can start working on the pitch clock. <laughs> <laughs> perhaps I don't know about that, but um, I just feel like it's uh, a lot is up in the air, and given how close the circumstances are, um, and this is our last regular season estimate, I'm thinking that we go with you guys telling us. And by the way, you both equipped with uh, writing utensils. Oh, I've, I wrote my number down already. Mark has his one pen. Mark, how do you how do you know the question? Hand. Didn't we leave the room before when they said it? I still heard it. Yeah, I did too. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> hmm. I cheated as well. Really makes you think. All right, well, <laughs> at least we both did all, it. I knew that you guys did because you came right back in the second as, I, I yeah, stopped as talking. Soon, as soon as I heard, it, I go, James can hear this too. It's I know it's, I said the exact same thing. This was useless. <laughs> I was gonna try right, my well, headphones. I was like, why am I gonna do that? Well, it's good. It's broad, and it is how many total runs scored. Well, we have in this three game series against the nationals straight up. Yeah. Um, I got my number. It's an, it's a number that is, it's a number. It's a number. That's a number. And it's a number that's guessable. What are you thinking, James? All right. Just run mine too. Shall we show them? Yep. Yeah. Three, Countdown. two, one, 15, 20, 20. Wow. I went lower than James. I was about to go 16. I bumped it up, actually. Now I kind of I went, wish I went 16. I went five a game. I went five a game. I think that's yeah. a reasonable expectation. There's going to be a sprinkling in of more runs and less runs, and I think that 15 is a pretty even medium to find. Medium? Medium to find. Yeah. I mean, you know, this is both teams, right? Yeah. Oh, wait. It's both it. teams? Oh, my God. <laughs> now, you, if you said it, that's on me. If you said it, that's <laughs> you on definitely me. definitely said it. <laughs> it is the Mets only. Okay. I botched it. James is <laughs> James won this one. We're going to go down to a and push off oh <laughs> i bet still might not win it still could go oh, this could be a very low scoring series but i'm happy that that i saw that number from you wow yeah i really got cocky and thought it was just the mets mm. so what it you was like three games too, right? before three botch games job. botch job by me i would have gone with 25 if i had think thought it was both teams oh that's awful well james congrats on tying it up Oh, I don't like the reverse jinx. Just get out of Congrats here. Congrats <laughs> on tying it up. And then Shut I'll, up. I'll start working on my push-ups these next few days so that I can uh, – or or maybe I should do no push-ups. So you don't want to get sore. You don't want to get sore. Yeah. Mm. I don't, honestly, I, I don't remember the last time I did push-ups. I like that. And yeah. you think you could do 40 or 50? Oh, oh no. James – I think James is kind of buttering your bread a little bit by saying that. I'm not gonna lie. Listen, I know, I know, you know, I'm the YouTube guy over here. I don't work out like everybody else. I'm not Mr. Fitness over here. Mr. Fitness, Mr. Mr. Olympian. Fitness, yeah, Mr. Yeah. Olympian. But I, the, the Olympics are in my blood. I'm Greek. I'm just, I'm built different. <laughs> You're built different, but I think in the wrong way. Ah, all right.
If it was, let me tell you, if it was a sitting competition, nobody would beat me. I'm the best sitter there is. Oh man, some of the Braves fans got my mentions. That's not that cool. No, nah, you, you gotta they, get off Twitter. They found me. You gotta get off Twitter. They're, they've uh, been digging. But you know what? Let this be their World Series. Congratulations. This oh, is your World man. Series. The we're memes, are, about, the we're memes are insane about right the real, now. The real one. We're worried about the real one. Can I tell you guys something really, really screwed up? All right, might as well go for it. The Mets divisional odds in the last three days have dropped from 78% to 2%. Oh, that's all right. Let's let's kick John and Vito out and wrap this up on that uh, note. Uh, John and Vito, thanks for stopping by. Well, uh, we'll catch up with you guys soon. Uh, I cut John <laughs> off. Cut John. Get, I've had enough. I've had enough. <laughs> Call him Johnny Words because there's too many. John, yeah, Johnny Words, Johnny Lasagna, Johnny Stats, Johnny Linens, Johnny Napkins. So he's a man of many names. We got, we got to come up with a name for Vito. Uh, I had one before. He said, oh, Vito Visor. Vito Visor. Okay. No, nah, I, 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 Vito's, really Vito, Vito's a name where you don't really need a nickname because Vito is like a strong name. Is John, a strong name. John is literally the most basic name that exists. Strong Paisan. <laughs> oh, Ishkia. <laughs> All right. Should we? I mean, are we going to preview the series? I don't know who's pitching. I'm not previewing this. I don't know. Uh, you know what? Fine. I'm, ju- I'm just saying you could do better. Just, yeah. All right. Do we just mention it? Do we want to? Should we? I guess I'll, I'll bring it up. I got to yeah. Google it. I'm, I'm on Met schedule. All right. Tomorrow, I'm going to do this. Carrasco versus Corey Abbott. Win. Tyler <laughs> Walker versus Daniel Espino. Daniel, nope. It's Paolo Espino. Way worse. Win. Daniel Espino is the, the prospect. Daniel Espino is awesome. Paolo Espino throws 84. Me and you could hit Paolo Espino. There's no excuse. Uh, game game three, TBD for the Mets versus Eric Fetty. That guy stinks too. Uh <laughs> I'm done being nice. I'm done being nice. I've been nice to all these pitchers, not trying to jinx anybody all year. And this is where it's got me. Beat the Nationals. Beat the crap out of them. You're way better than them. You just just, have, just get hot. Just try to get hot. Swing. Win. Win. And if the Braves win, you can't worry about it. Just get hot before the playoffs, and we keep doing our thing. Um, that's it. I think that's it. I guess. I don't know. Score, 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 score runs. Score runs. Score runs and hit the hopefully ball hard. It's, Hopefully the Mets score 15 and the National score zero this series. That would be fun because then I would win and I don't have to do push-ups. And I, <laughs> not, you don't care as much about losing. You just care about not doing push-ups. Yeah, I think that's really where I'm at at this point. Uh, that's it, guys. This is the final second penultimate. Look at that word. SAT word of the day for you guys. SAT has got to be coming up for some of you juniors in high school that you're listening it's October. Guess, October. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah. you do that, for, that first half of high school. Also, like, keep an eye out for bonus episodes, guys. We did Howie Rose, came out last week. It's gotten some great uh, responses after we had to, after, after the second the time went out. Technical difficulties. Yeah. Technical difficulties. And that went out well. It's, it's an awesome interview. Harold and Cliff. Harold Rounds and Cliff Floyd on Friday. That's awesome. Hopefully, Matt Vaskersian this week, Mark DeRosa soon. Got a lot of great bonus content. Hope you guys enjoy that. Yeah, definitely take it in. It's a great listen. Great. Great to hear about. And, you know, we talk about the Mets, of course, as always. Maybe a little bit different than what we expect now, but yeah. we'll, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. But uh, that's where we're going to sign off, guys. Thank you for listening to episode number 138. Uh, again, who cares what number it is at this Doesn't point? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Second to last episode before the final, before the regular season. We will preview whoever the Mets are playing in the postseason, whether that be the Padres or Phillips. the wild card winners, whatever it is. Um, in the next episode, Thank you guys for listening. Thank you for sticking with us through this episode. I know it's a tough one after the Mets lose, especially like this. Uh, it's something you don't necessarily want to listen to, but we appreciate all of those who do. Follow us on all our social media at Mets Stuff on TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram, the New York Mets YouTube channel. Go subscribe over there. And listen to uh, if you're listening to us, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Odyssey. Drop us a rating, drop us a review, download, and subscribe. Follow James on Twitter at James underscore Shiano. Follow me at Giraffe Neck Mark with a C. We will catch you guys after the National Series to talk playoff baseball. It's October. Let's get ready for it. Peace out, guys. Peace out, guys. See you next time. Thanks for listening. Get up. Get, get up. Get up.